let's talk about, first of all, um, the fact that uh, apparently the Ministry of Justice is saying that it's investigating all viable op options when it comes to picking up a, a, a policy plan that was vaguely outlined by the previous Justice Minister, Alex Chalk, and the Conservative government to send criminals over to Estonia to serve their time. Tell us more about that. Well, I think what this uh, shows is the sort of desperate measures uh, that are needed to deal with the prisons crisis. You know, Alex, is, as you know, we've talked about, I think, before, uh, the prisons are bursting at the seams. We've got the latest figures, in fact, this morning in England and Wales, there were 88,521 prisoners um, today. That is a record figure. Uh, there's only around a thousand spare places across all prisons in um, male, female, youth custody, and probably just a few hundred uh, in male prisons, which is where the real crisis point is. So one of these options the government's looking at is renting space in Estonia, where they, they don't have as many prisoners as we do, nothing like that. And in fact, they've got spare capacity. They're looking to make some money from it, the Estonian government. Uh, so you would think, oh, well, this is a, you know, a great result. We fly prisoners to Estonia, we put them up in prisons there until the end of their sentence, then we fly them back uh, and they're released. Uh, the difficulty with this is, firstly, we would have to pay the Estonian government uh, to do that. Secondly, we're going to have to pay the flights of the prisoners. Thirdly, uh, we're probably going to have to pay for some prison officers to go there who speak um, English and understand some of the sort of cultural traditions of English uh, prisoners and so on. Uh, and the last thing is visits, family visits. These are a really important part of a prisoner's rehabilitation. And although you might be able to do some calls over Zoom, the real thing that's so important to prisoners and the thing they look forward to every week are the weekly visits from, from loved ones. Hugely important to keep those ties. And I think that's the biggest obstacle to this idea getting off the ground. I mean, other countries have done this, um, and we are at a point where we just don't have enough prison space. But is there an element here that we could end up bumping up against the good old ECHR, as we have done on so many things before? I mean, I had somebody, Sarah in West Sussex, message me saying, Hi, Alex, regarding utilising prison space in Estonia, why aren't we returning foreign prisoners? Surely that is the obvious thing to do. If we've got foreign prisoners in our prisons here, surely we should be able to send them back home. I think that's a much better idea. There are around 10,000 foreign national prisoners in jails in England and Wales at the moment. Um, the number has come down a little bit over the past 10 or so years, but it's barely budged. And if even a proportion of those uh, could be made to serve their sentences abroad, you know, just two or 3,000, that would uh, create quite a lot of space. Now, the difficulty has been getting prisoner transfer agreements with other countries. Some of them don't really want uh, offenders uh, to serve their time in, in their jails. But here I think diplomacy, diplomatic efforts uh, between top ranking officials, between ministers, country to country, can really sort of unblock some of those obstacles as well as legislation. I think the government may well be putting forward some, some new measures uh, that will make it easier to send prisoners back perhaps earlier on in their sentence. I think that is really where the government needs to be pushing, frankly, rather than sending uh, UK prisoners to Estonia. Uh, what about uh, the idea of there are too many people in prison anyway, that we have rather become addicted to long sentences, which end up clogging up prisons, aren't actually doing much good other than co costing the taxpayer more and more money, that it, it's not necessarily, some would argue, proven that um, the longer the sentence you serve, the more likely you are to be rehabilitated. And that there, I mean, for instance, the prisons minister, Lord Timpson, James Timpson, has sort of suggested that a third of prisoners, frankly, shouldn't be in prison in the first place uh, and and so there has been a sort of push that perhaps there are people who are serving very long sentences or po possibly not even that long sentences who could come out sooner but as part of this um it's now also been suggested that violent domestic abusers could be released from prison early under plans to tackle the overcrowding crisis i mean where are we at with this in in the uk is it true that we actually lock people up for longer than most of our counterparts yeah, I mean, there's a couple of uh, points, I think, Alex. I mean, the first thing is, yes, we do have a very large prison population uh, compared to most other uh, European countries. Um, and the sentences have got longer over the past 10 uh, to 20 years. 
Um, and, you know, I, I would applaud some of that, particularly for the most serious crimes, for murder, for rape, serious sexual assaults, um, you, know, the, the, you know, egregious use of violence. I think it's right that people go to prison for a long time uh, and are kept away uh, from communities. I agree with that. But at the other end, there are people who are being locked up over and over again. It's not doing any good. They're in and out. They lose the family ties. They lose their, their employment. Um, and, and the prison is not doing anything to deal with their underlying problems, which are drug misuse, mental health difficulties, or alcohol abuse. And so that's where I think we need to look. Personally, I would look at the kind of the lower end and look at whether there are alternatives in the community that we can use involving electronic tags and curfews, substance misuse programs. Uh, and I would like to see some of those offenders released, but the most serious and violent, frankly, I think they need to be locked away. I think your um, the point you're making about domestic abusers, next week, uh, we know on Tuesday, there are going to be some 2000 prisoners released early from their sentences at the 40% mark because of the overcrowding um, and this is to alleviate pressure in all around five and a half thousand prisoners are going to be released early amongst amongst those uh, will be some people who may have been convicted of offenses involving domestic abuse but where that hasn't been flagged where it hasn't been flagged to police and the authorities so it is possible some domestic abusers will be among those released I want to delve down into what, when you mention community schemes here, because I don't really understand what these are or what they involve. And, and uh, sorry to put you on the spot, I don't know whether you're going to be able to answer my question, but what are some of the sorts of things that other countries do that perhaps we could replicate? Are there sort of other schemes that I know, for instance, Scandinavia, it's often mooted, has a very different approach to rehabilitation than perhaps we do. I've often thought to myself, and this might be a madcap idea, who knows? But we constantly moan about not having enough people to work in agriculture, for example, people to pick fruit and vegetables. And we're getting a lot of uh, young, healthy men in from countries like Estonia to do that. And I wonder whether some of these people being released early in order to put some money in the back of their pockets, uh, you know, enable them to get used to working again, uh, reintegrate themselves back into the concept of being part of society, that actually whether that would be a possibility possibility, looking at finding ways that prisoners or people moving from prison estates into the community could be used to plug some of those employment gaps. I think it's a really good idea, Alex. I mean, there are unpaid work schemes already. So if you're sentenced um, by the courts and you're given a community sentence, it very often includes 100, 200 hours of unpaid work, which is, you know, cleaning uh, graffiti, perhaps um, it, you know, clearing a woodland or, or whatever, you know, that kind of thing um, is often done. I think what you're suggesting is an extension of that where people, you know, they're perhaps given an incentive to do the work um, and given a wage to do those jobs that other people don't want to do. I think there should be an extension of that. I'd like to see a lot more of that. The difficulty always is enforcing it. Because if you're making people do something they don't want to do, then you have to have a rule to enforce it and you have to have a punishment effectively if they don't comply. And that often involves going back into prison. That's always the problem with some of these schemes is that it can be a revolving door. Uh, let's have a listen now to uh, your mate, Tom, uh, Robert Jenrick. I'm name dropping him now because he was on breakfast this morning with Mike Grimm. He was talking about the idea of sending some prisoners to Estonia. This morning we're also hearing they're thinking of sending some prisoners to Estonia. What do you make of that? Well, look, I, I accept this is a difficult issue because there is capacity constraints in our prisons mm. right now. But it does feel to me as if, for ideological reasons, Keir Starmer and the Labour Party are quick to release people. Are they straining every sinew to find extra capacity in our prisons? Are they thinking of any alternative, any creative solution? Yeah, stay with us, Danny. I'm going to put this to you, Tom. What do you think the solution would be? I mean, there's your potentially your boy, Jenrick. You're not 100% sure whether yeah. he would be the man you want to lead the party. Um, uh, if Alex was empress for the day, uh, she would uh, actually give people paid work. There's a charity I know called Tempers Novo who work very closely with convicts. And one of the big difficulties, and this is something I'm sure James Timpson himself would advocate, the people who have served time face is actually getting jobs. People don't want yeah 
yeah. people with a criminal record <laughs> and they're often untested unproven you know if you yeah. go to uh, some of the restaurants in sort of you know Brixton has what is it clink restaurants or whatever it's another way a lot of prisoners are put to work to say look yeah. when you come out the other side this is how life operates I they don't have money in their pockets they got no jobs to walk into well why are we importing people to do those jobs well I think that's that's a fair, fair enough point I mean I was a radish picker actually back in the day I, I sorted radishes um, that was my my function for, for a few months and and leeks um, for, uh, mainly radishes a man of many skills mainly radishes, radishes and leeks. yeah I, but I was the only English person working there it, it was all, it was all um, people coming over for a few months so mm. yeah I mean I, I think if we can make use of the less serious criminals to do some work and fair enough but one thing I want to mention here is so I was on the education select committee when I was an MP mm. and we did a whole thing on prison education uh, I'm also very involved in special educational needs mm. and one of the things we actually went to prison and saw some some of the work employees were doing in prisons to upskill people um, was the fact that 50 percent approximately 50 percent of those in prison have got sp um, learning dis disabilities 50 percent right yeah. and I, so I think ultimately we've got to ask ourselves a question why is that you know, and um, why is it the fact that, you know, so many people have failed in the education system, perhaps they don't get the support they need, mm. and, you know, they feel like the system fails, then they turn against the system. So I think part of this is actually pretty, is better special educational needs provision. Of course, that's more of a medium to long-term thing. The Estonia thing is a bit random. It's sort of come out of nowhere, Estonia. I mean, it's a very nice place. Again, I, I was, I've uh, been to Thailand a few times, but I think that... Um, I, I take the point though that it, it does make rehabilitation harder because you know you you know the work with employees and prisons and you know seeing family it, that makes that harder. But to be honest with you, if, if it, when it comes to this more serious uh, criminals like domestic uh, abuses and things like that, if the alternative is between letting them out and sending them to a prison cell in Estonia, um, I'd probably rather them be sent to Estonia. But of course, the fundamental question is how on earth are we in this position? Mm, yeah. How on earth are we in this position where we right. don't have enough prison well, capacity? Yeah, how on earth are we in this position, Danny? Because uh, the previous government, your government uh, of, of old, um, promised they were going to build new prisons. I forget the names of all of them. One was HMP Fossway, that one I can remember for some reason. Um, but uh, what happened to those? I mean, is this just not a case that this is a stopgap? But we haven't really heard anything from the Labour government about building new prisons. Uh, the reason we're in this position, Alex, be is because the government that Tom uh, supported, unfortunately, um, didn't build the prison places it said it was going to build. It promised to build 20,000 places by the mid-2020s. It's delivered only 6,000. At the same time, it introduced various policies which had the effect of lengthening sentences um, for offenders. And also it recruited uh, police officers to fill the officers that they'd cut in austerity years. And that has led to more arrests, more charges, more people going to court, more people being sentenced. So it was doing one thing with one hand, but not doing the other thing that it needed to do with the other hand. That's why we're in the prison capacity crisis that we're in at the moment. The Estonia idea hasn't come out of nowhere. It was actually an idea that was floated by Alex Chalk, the previous Justice Secretary, that, who Tom will, will know very well, uh, under the administration he supported. He actually floated the idea, I think it was at the Tory conference last year. Um, so Labour, if, the, if they adopt it, if, if they go ahead with this, they're just adopting an idea that the Tories had. I don't think it will ever happen. I personally think it's one of those sort of ideas that's floated because it, it's a talking point, gets people thinking that the government's uh, trying to do something radical when actually what they are doing next week is releasing uh, thousands of prisoners at the 40% mark of their sentence because there's no other room.